Howdy once again, friends and enemies. This is the Black Spot. May God bless you. Uh, in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus' name. He is risen. And he is the king of all kings. And it's my pleasure to read to you from, again, the Rotten Libraries Cryptozoology Folder. Their article on the Yeti. Yeti, abominable snowman, abominable snowman. The legend of the abominable snowman is a curious one, primarily because it is well known on the basis of so little of a legend. With the Himalayas' rich panoply of religious influences and legends, nobody really thought a snowman running around the mountainside was especially noteworthy. Plenty of mythical beasties in the group in the neighborhood would match up with the general profile that we now lump together under abominable snowman. Snowman's uh, aliases include Migo, Merka, Alma, Metahokanga, Sogpa, Rashka, and most famously, the Yeti. It wasn't until the British arrived in Tibet that anyone started to make a fuss about the so-called Yeti, which has been more or less uniformly described as an oversized ape-like creature not dissimilar to North America's Bigfoots. Yet scholars such as they are placed the first sighting of the snowman in 1832 when British explorer B.H. Hudson told tales of a wild man covered in long dark hair and had no tail which walked upright. What's inexplicable is why this and subsequent reports were so interesting. There do exist apes that live in Asia, specifically orangutans, although quite rare. They can grow to be extremely large. There are also bears which are large and have no tails and can stand on two feet and monkeys and nomadic humans who wander in the wilderness. But this was the Victorian era, and the repressed British were suckers for anything that smacked of the unnatural, the lurid, and the sensational. Brit adventurers were steadily flowing in the Himalayas for mountain climbing and exploration, first driven by feeble-minded attempts to find the mythical Shangri-La, later by the desire to assert testicular fortitude by conquering mountains. While explorers kept their eyes peeled for the critter, there were few developments in the Yeti search for the next hundred years or so. Even perennial crackpot Alistair Crawley managed to travel to and from his mountaineering expeditions in the region with nary a tale of an unnatural beast, except for himself. Although the Yeti is considered a primarily Tibetan myth, sightings trickled in and from as far north as China and as far south as India. Toward the end of the 19th century, however, the question of the Yeti took on a slightly more important dimension. In 1871, Charles Darwin published The Descent of Man, which proposed that humans were descended from primates. The resulting uproar is still going on today, but the debate at the time was far more heated. The intelligentsia of the day was particularly obsessed with the idea of the missing link. In the early days of evolution, very little was clear, but horrified white Europeans were quite sure of one thing. There had to be some degrees of separation between them and the apes. A wild beast man seemed to be just the ticket. Since the British mountaineers swarming all over Himalayas were almost universally drawn from the wealthy, educated noble classes, they were keen on finding themselves an example post missing link. This fueled interest in a series of sightings and semi sightings from around 1915 through 1925. Most of these reports included a description of an oversized footprints, as well as publicized sightings by a photographer in a Tambazi really got the ball rolling. Tambazi spotted the crater from a distance of 1925 as part of the British expedition in a murky report. He related that it stood upright, appearing to be naked, and was strong enough to be uproot bushes as it foraged presumably for food. He found some large footprints in the snow, stubby but wide. Are you fascinated yet? Bored Brits spent the next 40 years searching for this thing. On the basis of these extraordinarily flimsy reports and with no particular incentive behind the perennial, just for the hell of it, nature of the British, once the frenzy began, began the sightings became fast and furious, each more daffy than the next. Every scrap of animal remains discovered on a mountainside became a relic of the Yeti. Several opportunists produced scalps that said belonged to the snowmen, but these were all found out to be fakes. One guy claimed a snowman attacked him. Another claimed one rescued him after a fall and nursed him back to health. The whole thing may have been gotten long forgotten, but now except the ah, sorry, sorry, the whole thing would have long forgotten. But now except that the true, eminently respectable Sir Edmund Hillary, the man, 
who conquered Everest decided to take a stab at it in 1960. But even Hillary dismissed the Yeti as a fiction after spending nearly a year on the hunt. One of his fellow expeditioners, Desmond Dog, eventually decided there was a Yeti of, of yore, but that it was probably some kind of ape variant, which is what a, any sensible person would have decided in the first place given the terrain. In the 40 years since, no one has come up with any proof of the snowman's existence. While the world is full of strange and wonderful things, there comes a point where you have to cut your losses. At least with Bigfoot, there are a few blurry pictures of furry blobs, which to make the myth uh, even more real, even if the pictures are all fakes. Sure, there could be some kind of fancy ape wandering in mountains of Tibet. Hell, it's not even all that unlikely. But with such a dearth of evidence, it's hard to see how continuing the search makes any sense at this late date. Especially when there's a face on Mars to check out and an alien autopsy to scrutinize. I hear there's some little girls who keep fairies in their gardens. And thank you, this has been The Black Spot. It's been my pleasure to read another article for you. And God bless you, in Christ Jesus' name, and his Father, Lord Jehovah, the Holy Spirit. May they all serve as your armor as you go through this life. Thank you very much. I pray for each and every one of you salvation. May you all see the light. Howdy once again, friends and enemies. This is the Black Spot. May God bless you. Uh, in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus' name, he is risen.